Chi-squared is an equation that tests the independence between variables or how well the results are related to chance and not some outside factor. The process starts with data collection and organization. A data chart is very helpful for this portion in which the data needs to be separated into measurable categories. For my data, I was measuring the relationship between average temperature during a marathon and average finishing time. So in my data chart, I found the mean of the average finishing time, and then I um, put that into categories, and then I tallied up all of my points, and then the numbers that you see in the boxes are the, is the frequency of the observed values. Okay. It's important that each category has at least five data points in order for the equation to be accurate. The next step is to find the expected frequency. So first you need to find the probability of each variable to occur. For example, to find the probability of someone finishing um, in less than 26, 262.4 minutes, hours, wait, minutes, <laughs> and um, with a temperature less than 50.08. So, I'm, right now I'm multiplying, I'm trying to find the probability of this occurring. So I multiply this by this, and then you multiply that entire thing by the total number of values that you have, and that gives you your expected value, which is 7.16. Okay, so now I'm going to explain how to find the chi-square. <laughs> That's what you just did. Isn't that what I just did? Yeah. Okay, so this is the expected value. So you do that same thing for all of them. And then to find chi-squared, I'm just going to erase this. Is that okay? okay. So to find chi-squared, your equation is probability, probability of the expected value happening minus the probability of the observed value happening. And then you square that. So um, all of your values will be positive because you're squaring it, and then you subtract that by the probability of the expected. I spelled that wrong twice. Just ignore that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you subtract it. Divide it by the subtraction value again. So what that's going to look like with my values is uh, 11 minus 7.16 squared. And then you add the next one to that, which is 9 minus 8.84 squared. And then you divide that by 40. And then, so you do that with all of your values. And that equals chi-squared. OK. <laughs> The correlation coefficient in this project, which tells us both the strength of the data um, between the sets of data as well as the direction the data goes in. Um, to find the correlation coefficient, I'm going to use the equation 1 over n, which is the amount of data points I have, sigma x minus x bar times y minus y bar divided by the two standard deviations of x and y. Um, so the first thing I need to do is find out the mean of my x points, which is my independent data, data um, which is called x bar. And in this case, the x bar is 11.76875. And then how I found this was I added up all of my x points and then divided it by 40, which is the total number of data points that I have. I'm going to do the same thing with the y points, which gives me y bar. In this case, is 19.24925. Then I need to use the x bar and y bar to find out if the points of my data, or the points on my graph, if they're positive or negative, which is this part of the equation. Um, for each x point, I'm going to subtract x bar from it, so x minus x bar, and this gives me the value of each point. So it's going to be either positive or negative. 
Um, one example would be I have a data point of 17.75 and I subtract 11.76875, which equals 5.982. So this point would be positive. Um, so I do that for all of my x data points, then do the same thing for all of my y data points. Um, and after I get a value for x, for example this one, I'm going to multiply it by the corresponding y value. Um, and this shows us how our, once we do it for all the points, shows us how all of our data points on the graph, if they're mostly negative or mostly positive or all negative or positive. Um, and that tells me which direction my data goes in. Um, then we need to find out the strength of the point, which is the standard deviation part of the equation. Um, the, so the standard deviation for my set of data is x equals 7.984293, and it's a really long number, but I'm going to make sure I use the whole number because it needs to be exact. And then my standard deviation for my y points is 0.3933 and is also super long. And I'm going to put all of that into my calculator. So I'm going to multiply these together, which gives me to 3 sig figs, 3.08. Um, I use this as the denominator in my equation, so this part. Um, and then I would have on the top what I found out earlier for each point and then if we we're going to do all the correlation coefficient by hand we would do all of these separately each different equation for each of the corresponding points once I figure out all of the individual points up here on my calculator it would be this plus da, 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 for all of my 40 points I'm going to times the numerator by 1 over n which in my case is 1 over 40 because I have 40 points um, and then that would end up being divided by this part of the equation, which is here. And that's how you find your correlation coefficient. And the reason why that's important is because, like I said, it shows both the direction and how strongly the data points go in that direction.